I'd like to call this special meeting of the Stewart City Commission to order our budget workshop number three on August 17th at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, as we do have a uh, our vice mayor attending digitally, if you would, uh, Mr. Dias, kindly read the statement. Yes, sir. Pursuant to, pursuant to Executive Order 20-69 issued by the Office of Governor Ron DeSantis on March 20th, 2020 and extended to September 1st, municipalities may conduct meetings of their governing boards without having a quorum of its members present physically or at any specific location and utilizing communication media technology such as telephonic or video conferencing as provided by Florida Statute 120.54. Attending by device and you wish to speak, please click the raise your hand button at the bottom and your microphone will be unmuted and remuted when it is your time to speak during public comment. If attending by phone, press star nine to raise your hand and your uh, telephone will be unmuted and remuted during your time to speak when appropriate during public comment. During roll call, commissioners asked to indicate whether they are here in person or attending remotely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dias. Ms. Kendall, will you uh, please call the roll? Mayor Meyer. Here in person. Vice Mayor Clark. Um, I'm, oops, I'm present and I am attending by remote. Commissioner Bruner? Here, in person. Commissioner Matheson? Here, in person. Okay, please uh, stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you all. Um, do we have any comments by our city commissioners today for this workshop meeting? Uh, Commissioner Bruner? Yeah. No comments, Mayor. No, com Manager? no comments, Mayor. Mr. Manager, any comments? Um, I do want to, I'm not sure if you're going to take public comment today, that there's no uh, voting action items, but I did want to uh, read off um, as it's probably our last time to read this. We are currently what, in what we refer to as an election season. We have city commissioners that are in an active campaign for re-election. Public comment is to address the city commission as a whole. We do not allow politicking, which is defined as advocating the election or defeat of a particular candidate, use of words, dates, uh, signs, props, and or wearing apparel, or name place to convey a message or express advocacy for a person or group of persons is not allowed. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you, Mr. Dias, for the reminder. Um, Lord Mayor, I'll motion to approve the agenda. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Matheson and a second by uh, Commissioner Bruner for approval of the agenda. Is there any public comment on the agenda? Seeing none, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now we'll move on to our comments from the public, general public comment, not attached to any line item. Is there anybody here that would like to make general public comment? Seeing none, any online, sir? No, sir. Okay, we'll move right along. Um, to item number one, a commission action item, the extension of a declaration of state of local emergency with reference to COVID-19. Mr. Mortel, would you read the resolution, please? This is a resolution. This is resolution number 103-2020, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Stewart, Florida, extending the declaration of a state of local emergency pertaining to COVID-19, providing an effective date and for other purposes. Thank you, sir. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion for approval? Move approval. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. I have a motion for approval. Is, is that a date of September 28th? I will second. Um, would you like to, to go on to September until September 28th? Second. Okay, I have a motion by Vice Mayor Clark and a second by Commissioner Matheson. Any um, public comment? Any online, sir? Sorry, I had to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, seeing none, uh, is this a roll call, Mary? Yes. yes. Well, you tell me. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Wonderful. Moving on. Item number two, our fiscal year 2021 budget workshop number three, Mr. Bolioli. Mr. Dias. Well, he's going to take the first section and then I'll take it after that. Okay. He's going to give a brief 
few slides presentation. Um, commissioners and uh, audience and attendants, thank you for uh, coming in today. This is our budget workshop number three. As uh, we discussed in the previous budget, uh, the 2021 budget year timeline is greatly askew because of uh, various delays in city staff attendance physically on site to prepare the budget as well as the state of Florida delaying uh, historically, I think for the first time, the latest they've ever put out the revenues that the city of Stewart's budget uh, are a large percentage of. I think last time we discussed that some of our other fellow governments locally uh, don't rely on the state revenue sources as much as we do. They have predominantly ad valorem taxes or some other revenue source not related to that. So um, last time we saw you in budget workshop number two, uh, as I explained uh, previously how this works, it's, it's really sort of like a go fish game. The departments submit their requests for what they believe uh, they need to operate next year's budget uh, to operate the city and provide the level of service that the citizens expect. And they put in their request for what they believe is necessary to provide those services. It may be capital requests, additional operating expenses, uh, positions, whatever, whatever they feel is necessary. Uh, we generate uh, cumulative reports and numbers for that. And then uh, we compare that to the revenues and, you know, what have you got? And so at that juncture at the last workshop, when the department request had been submitted based against the revenues that we were aware of and comfortable with presenting, we were about a million four out of budget. About a million four expenses exceeded the revenues. So uh, I did not envy the manager in this uh, endeavor to try and balance that. Um, first and foremost, this is the current DR420. This is what the budget is based on, based on uh, Florida statutes about the proviso for generating, calculating what ad valorem taxes would be by the various local entities that collect property tax. So it displays our current year adjusted gross taxable value and then uh, what our proposed millage is this year and what the revenues to generate here. Per the trim, we, uh, we budget 95% of these revenues, not 100%. Okay, that allows for early collection, for non-payments, and the other, uh, you know, other incidentals that may happen. So 95% uh, of that number is what's budgeted by law. And you'll see there it displays what is the current rollback rate based on uh, a couple factors, including the CRA TIF payment from prior year, as well as the growth in property tax and a per capita um, factor, growth factor in, in Florida. So that here's where the numbers come down to. At taxable value times our current proposed millage. Uh, we did put that on the DR420 as a not to exceed amount. 95% uh, generates that. Plus, uh, the city, the general fund appreciated about a 6.7% increase in property values. The CRA got about an 18% increase in property values. Uh, their increase based on our five mills means that the general fund owes the CRA 1093858 there's that 6.73 increase I talked about at Valorum. Net of the CRA, which is about 131,000 more than we gave them this year in the 20 fiscal year. Uh, so that means general fund has about $529,000 in new at Valorum revenues. Now, of course you have to offset that against any decreases in other revenues, but all things remaining equal, that meant you had about $500,000 to use. Uh, the rollback rate is always a point of interest uh, based on the final taxable values of 2020, which uh, as I've mentioned before, that's kind of a misnomer. Uh, the numbers that we use for budgeting are not the final numbers that rollback is calculated on. Uh, we're much later in the budget process, later in the year, they inform us what the final taxable value of the city is. And that's a, you know, it's, it's not a well-kept secret. It's just simply a number that falls into, you know, forms and documents tucked away in Tallahassee. And that final taxable value is net of all kinds of like value adjustment board challenges and any corrections to the tax roll. So that final taxable value, less those CRA TIF payments and whatever generates 4.7983 as our rollback rate. If you were to enact the rollback rate, you would instantly lose $423,000 in Avalorum dollars. And so just as a point of uh, clarification, there, there's kind of a misunderstanding that rollback rate means the taxpayers pay the same bill. Actually, it just means the city generates the same revenue. 
So there's, there's very, very, very few rare instances where a taxpayer pays the exact same tax bill as they did previously when you initiate the rollback rate, but the city gets the same revenues it got last year. Um, this is an example bill. This is always a favorite. What would your tax bill look like? This is the, if your taxable value, that means all exemptions aside, everything taken out, if your tax bill is based on $100,000, at five mills, you have a $500 tax bill to the city of Stewart. Now that does not equate your entire tax bill. Again, many taxpayers receive a tax bill and think that the entire bill due is to the city of Stewart. We are simply one line on the tax bill. It, that tax bill also includes what you pay Martin County, the school board, state of Florida, South Florida Water Management District, other entities like that. So, so there are a number of taxpayers who are somewhat not fully informed on what their tax bill means but the one line on that bill for us would be $500 at a $100,000 taxable value. <laughs> this is uh, where, we, where we wound up. Um, those those uh, revenues that we had, you can see here where the puts and takes are, um, you know, what the change is over the requested amount that was submitted and then where the manager's recommended budget currently is. So you can see that tick up uh, there's about a million one more in revenues uh, from other sources, miscellaneous revenue, judgments and fines remain pretty much the same. Charges for service, intergovernmental revenue, so it's firm as that. Now the increase of in taxes came and the intergovernmental revenue increase came from those particular revenues that we were discussing in the previous uh, budget workshop. Major revenue changes. So the communication service tax currently today in the 2020 budget is $910,000. The state of Florida has been warning us for the last several fiscal years to prepare for a decrease in that tax. Um, at, the, at the budget workshops, one and two, uh, the manager asked me to plug in a, a number based on models, uh, taking into account what we've collected so far to date. And yes, there have been decreases in, in remissions for the current year. And I said that last time. General fund will have to deal with how short we are now in the 2020 year and what that's going to mean to us at the bottom line at the end of this year. And so we, we don't know the full effect of uh, COVID-19 and the economic downturn at the moment to general fund. But based on those models, we had we had downgraded our revenues for communication service tax, shared proceeds, and half cent sales tax. Um, it was a loss of about $692,000. When the numbers came in from the state of Florida, Actually, communication service tax was higher than it currently is. Um, but shared proceeds and half cent sales tax did come in lower. However, you know, much to our relief, uh, it was about only a 5% drop in shared proceeds and about an 18% drop in half cent sales tax. Sarah, before we move on, if I can just, so just so we're clear, recommended represents actual final numbers from the state. That is what the state of Florida has published on their website as due to the city of Stewart in Martin County, Florida. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, there, there is always a true up. Um, I mean, they gave us that same number for this year. Uh, you know, and if collections aren't what they are, there'll be some kind of true up payment at the end of the year. And that will be, you know, integrated into the audit and the final financials of the city. But generally, that is their number. And they have a little cushion in that themselves. That's not just straight dollar for dollar. You know, they're, they're finance people like I am. They've got their little puts and takes that they do. So they've got a reserve amount up there as well but there will be a, a final adjustment, but we can relatively expect to collect that, those amount of numbers. I just wanna be clear in case anybody's watching who's participating for the first time in a budget yeah. workshop process requested, I would imagine as a first participant that that's our, fi our specialist, our finance director saying, this is what I expect we're gonna get. And then maybe the manager saying, well, let's be a little more bullish. But just to, so we're clear, this is yeah, the recommended to be, is the final. To be crystal clear, the manager gets to take it. It's like I get to take a hit on the requested because that's my number. Right. Okay, I, I'm, I'm responsible for that. The manager gets it easy because that number is what the state of Florida gave us. <laughs> so, you know, he, <laughs> he gets to look like a hero there, but uh, that's just what the state of Florida told us. So I get to put that into his column. He looks like a, like a hero there. He is a hero. Yep, he is a hero. So All right, thank uh, you. Let's, let's, move move on. On. let's move on. Let's yeah. Move on. Thank um, you, sir. And then, of course, here, this is uh, where our personal services went. So you can see that in the personal services category, the when we came to you with the requested budget, that was a million four out of balance. These were where these categories of expenses were. Um, and the manager now has, you know, 
taken the appropriate cuts he needed to to get personal services down where they are, to cut operating expenses, to deny capital request or you know come up with other financing schemes and then also some debt service that was added in. Uh, I will tell you that does include our recent purchase that was not there previously. So don't don't think we suddenly, you know, it's about $564,000 increase there. That should sound familiar to you. That's about what, you know, that's in the neighborhood of the recent purchase we just made about a week ago. So that debt service is now reflected in this budget. Okay. Um, what is in here, the manager now recommends, uh, he still has a 2% general wage increase in here for employees. Uh, he, however, his lump sum merit is one of those numbers. He shaved about $100,000 out of that merit. He was very gracious in the requested and he got, got very realistic in the recommended. So we have shaved that down as his proposal for the, to the, uh, for the employees. Uh, we still are picking up the $90,000 in health insurance we talked about. And there are three new positions in the general fund uh, grants manager position in the city manager's department and two additional firefighters to staff a full-time rescue three. Uh, there is also revenue generated by that additional service of a full-time ambulance. So that's here to offset, you know, to help offset the cost of the two additional firefighters. And uh, that was it. Thank you kindly, sir. Are there any questions for um, the summary that Mr. Baglioli gave us before we move on? My question. Uh, yes. Yes, Vice Mayor. Mr. Mayor, yes, I had asked Mr. Boglioli to, I know he kind of touched on it when we did rollback, but just to, to give us a summary of things that we had done in the past to increase um, our budget, such as adding an assessment, such as our fire assessment, um, and how much those had brought into our um, to balance, to help balance our budget. Okay. And, and uh, how we'll how be, be continuing with something like the fire assessment. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the fire assessment that the city has enacted, this is the sixth year of the fire assessment. The city enacted a fire assessment because each year general fund was more than a million dollars out of balance with our best efforts of put and takes. And at the moment, public safety cost about $14 million and ad valorem taxes generates $10 million. So we are $4 million in the hole with just ad valorem against police and fire. So forget paving streets, forget recreation and ball fields, any of that kind of stuff. So the fire assessment was enacted and I know I've been asked, oh, is a police assessment next? Fire assessment is about the only service that you can say every property benefits from, uh, either through a, an implied insurance, you know, reduction in their premium because of our good service, uh, our rating one, obviously ISO rating one, and you know the the saving of collateral damage. So the fire assessment is about the only service you could unilaterally charge to all properties and not be challenged in its equality. We had our fire assessment tried in a district court and ruled as legal. So it could not be challenged later as not being constitutional or not legal. Our fire assessment is based on two tiers. Tier one is a flat fee, $108.30 on every parcel, whether you're a single family residential or you're a Walmart. Tier two is based on the market improvement value, not your taxable value. So the market improvement value can be wildly different between properties and we collect $1.30 for every $5,000 of market improvement value. So that kind of levels the playing field between properties that have escaped the ad valorem assessment due to exemptions or low property value. They now have some skin in the game as Commissioner Kroskoff called it. So every property is contributing towards the cost of fire service. And I know some people in the past have tried to equate it to a millage value, but because you can have two properties sitting side by side that look identical and have uh, identical tax bills, their market improvement value underneath could be different. So they actually have two different fire assessments. So to try and equate the fire assessment to a millage is a misnomer because it is absolutely different for each and every property that pays it. That fire assessment currently generates about a million two eighty seven. Sorry. Was it, I didn't, that didn't seem like sticker shock to me, Vice Mayor, sorry. <laughs> that was a sneeze, right? Okay. Yes. And so, 1,287 helps to offset the cost 
of that ten million, that four million dollar burden between ad valorem and public safety cost. Right. So that one point two million helps to fill the gap. And as you can see, you know, if we didn't have that fire assessment, the manager would have been looking at two million six out of balance. So, you know, being a million four out of balance with a million two from the fire assessment in there, it, you know, just helps us get to that point. We are currently trying to recover 30% of the fire department cost with that. It can't be used for salaries. It can only be used for operational cost. You know, the fire union can't get a raise based on the fire assessment, but it is meant to purchase capital and equipment. And, uh, and that was in the 20 budget was to pledge the fire assessment as we did previously against the fast attack pump number one. Uh, we have pledged it against a, the purchase of a new fire truck. Unfortunately, because of COVID, that truck will not be delivered until next fiscal year. So we're reserving the funds and actually going to do that next year. So uh, the, the fire assessment is a non avalorum assessment added to the tax bill of Stewart taxpayers. And Are you satisfied with that, Vice Mayor? Yes, thank you, thank you. Well, shall we move on to uh, our steep dive with our city manager? Thank you, sir. Um, it is my pleasure to present you the line item balance budget for fiscal year 2021. Um, it was in your agenda packet and a couple of announcements prior to getting into that. I've had some feedback with some commissioners, so we're gonna change this process up a little bit, how we do this today. Um, we're gonna have uh, each of the departments come up to the table and give a short little brief on maybe some accomplishments or some goals they wish to achieve next year. <coughs> we'll give you the opportunity if you have any questions within their particular budget sections to, uh, to speak uh, candidly with uh, those individual department directors. Um, I asked them to try to limit the time. Um, I, you know, I know that some people are verbose and some people are shy. So to try to limit it to like 10 or 15 minutes max for their uh, what, for what they have to present to you. Um, I also want to thank um, uh, Mr. Boglioli and the finance staff. They worked very hard and tirelessly. I was on them quite a bit about giving me some kind of a state revenue estimates because it was just pushing this process back forever. And Jolie took the time to put together this uh, demonstration project for me to show me why our dependence on those other funds as it relates to the state shared funds are so important to us, where they may not be so important to some other municipalities um, based on our ratio of our ad valorem and where our, uh, our funds all come from. So I appreciate him doing that and uh, educating me. Another announcement that I would like to make is pending the approval of uh, chapter two, um, which will be coming to you in September, um, or at least this section of chapter two, I'll be adding a new department. And that department will be the utilities and engineering department. And the public works department will remain uh, with the functions that uh, Mr. Milton Leggett currently conducts, and he will be the department director of public works. And Mr. Dave Peters will be the department director of utilities and engineering. Uh, Mr. Peters has spoken to me about um, some future plans of his and how large that department is. And so breaking this out, I think, um, will help with uh, managing that and not put all that weight on one in particular, uh, particular individual who uh, ends up taking that seat eventually. And with that, that is the first department that I'm going to call up to the table. Public Works? Yes. Thank you, sir. <coughs> we got a whole crew. We do. We have a very large department. I, I've heard it takes a village. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for allowing us to uh, participate in the budget process uh, this year. Um, Overview of, of what we've accomplished over the, the past year. We've completed the septic to sewer conversion program, which many of you have been invited to on August the 28th to kind of wrap that up and put it behind us. We've commenced the RO to treatment facility um, where we've started. Actually, we're three quarters of the way done with the first Lord and well. Uh, we've completed zone two of the pavement maintenance program. Uh, revamped more cemetery, commenced the 10th Street basketball metal shade structure, uh, revamped sailfish ball fields, completed the ri river walk redecking, completed the sidewalk along Dixie Highway, 
uh, which is along Green River Parkway. Uh, recognized uh, for having the best tasting drinking water. Recognized for outstanding operations and maintenance at the treatment facilities. Recognized for outstanding safety program and our safety as priceless uh, campaign. And finally, survived COVID-19. Um, things that we plan on doing in the 2020 year, uh, complete zone three of the pavement management program, commence construction of the actual RO facilities, replace the wooden railings along the fixed pier, complete the uh, Shepherd's Park improvements that we've talked about, uh, complete a sidewalk along Florida Street from Dixie to Johnson Avenue, initiate an asset management program that leads to public works accreditation, uh, complete a stormwater master plan. Uh, and those are just some of the highlights of what we intend to do in 2020 and what we accomplished in 2019 as a department. Uh, I'm ready to talk to you about the budget if you so desire in a sequential order as, as we have to. Uh, beginning with general funds, generally speaking, and the 1114 landfill operations. I know I'm limited to 15 minutes, but <laughs> but I may be able to borrow some time from Rob's. <laughs> okay. Everybody wants to defer their time. Okay. Well, as you can hear, uh, Mr. Peters and his group have done a lot, and they plan to do a lot next year. They're, they're a very accomplished division within our city, and we're very proud of the work they do, just like we are with the rest of the, of the departments as well. Um, he has many accounts, um, so I don't know if there's any specific account that you guys have questions over. And I'm sorry, I'm, my back is to you, Vice Mayor. Uh, if there's any specific areas or uh, accounts that you have any questions over, we'd be happy to entertain. Well, if I could, I'd just like to start by congratulating Mr. Leggett and uh, a pending Chapter 2. Yes. But uh, uh, that's great news and well-deserved, and I'm excited to hear that our public works department has has grown enough that it needs to be split apart so that it can that it can be they can work properly without having anybody tear all of their hair out um, so well done and congratulations um, i'll just say as a general note um, i don't have anything necessarily to pick apart with any of the individual um, uh, account codes within uh, the estimated appropriations. I will just say what I noticed, which I'm sure you all noticed as well, was um, it tended to be that the uh, there was a little bit of a jump in the department for the manager's request uh, for um, the personnel costs for the insurance. And we see that throughout all of the accounts, which goes back to the, the general wage increase um, and the, uh, the insurance. So that was the big notable thing for me. Um, I don't have anything in particular on my end if you'd like to um i'll jump in a, just a couple questions it's kind of a little different order than i took some notes let's see we'll jump i have both and milton uh, leggett tim volker and janine no Rob no i us. mean the whole sure. agenda as far as I, I went down and kind of line by line not necessarily starting a public work but um I'd like to congratulate Milton. Um, we don't want anyone in the department getting too big so it's uh, not as efficient as it could be. But it sounds like this is a good move. The handrailing, is that budgeted currently for ePay? Yes, it is. Excellent. In the CRA budget. <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> Thank you, Pinal. Well, you mentioned the handrailing, uh, so I hope when Pinal comes up here, she, Transfer from she's allowed CRA. to take some credit right. for it as well. <laughs> uh, the stormwater, there's going to be a, a rate increase. Uh, uh, it would be a good time for me to talk about that just briefly. Yes, um, currently, we have a stormwater deficit. Um, revenues don't don't match expenditures, and primarily that's due to two prior two main projects that we have to do next year. One is, if you haven't heard about it, there is a pipeline that runs under the FEC right-of-way uh, in East Stewart that doesn't meet their current standards. And we fully expect them to demand from the city of Stewart for that pipeline or that stormwater pipe to meet FEC requirements. Uh, that estimate is, I believe, $250,000, 
250, and, and we have a stormwater master plan as well. It's an updated master plan so that we can identify, so we can identify capital improvement projects uh, as a result of the two rain events this year. Sure gave us a good opportunity to relook at everything we do. And we think updating the master plan will lead to a capital improvement program, which will include, which will lead to a rate study. In the city of Stewart, you get charged four dollars and thirty-five cents in ERU for stormwater a month. The average, according to our rate consultant, is closer to ten dollars a month. So you can see the difference there, yeah. and just trying to stay in tune with what everybody else is doing. But more importantly, I think we all recognize that the stormwater master plan is in our best interest, not only for what's happened, but what will happen. So, so we're out. Rate increase. We're going to have a rate study. We will have a. We're asking for a rate increase this year. Okay. Just to cover our deficit, we're borrowing the money from the water and sewer fund, and then that money will be used to pay back the water and sewer fund over time for that three hundred twenty-five thousand dollar capital expenditure that we're going to have to put forth this year. And there were a couple of projects that were seem to be stricken. Uh, in the stormwater for the manager's recommendation. Will they be still on the table next budget? As they will priority? be included in the stormwater master planning document. Yes, sir. There's just more than that. There, there, there's a number of those out there that we have to look at. Um, I think that's everything for well since we jumped into the enterprise fund <laughs> um yeah so with with the stormwater rate increase again just to just so everyone is clear the original eru was four dollars and 35 cents. right so now it's it's S, the uh, request is seven it's seven dollars so, per erc so just we're to make splitting sure the difference yep just to make sure everyone mm -hmm. hears that and it's uh, necessary as we <laughs> Absolutely. As we necessary. continue to work towards our flooding management mm -hmm. in the city. Um, Vice Mayor, yes, you have your hand up. I'm not sure if this uh, <clears throat> under are you under land landfill for the public works also, Mr. Um, Peters? Can be, yes, ma'am. On page, uh, I think it's is it page 87? Yes. <clears throat> Just a question on the ongoing work with the landfill and the monitoring um is there anything that you have to tell us about that is that going to be completed um when the, the the funds for that professional services is over or is that a continuous thing uh the monitoring in perpetuity okay i think it's the best way to answer uh, our responsibility as it relates to the landfill um, okay. In the landfill budget, there is a twenty-five dollar uh, charge or twenty proposed twenty-five thousand dollars for professional engineering services related to the ongoing PFAS investigation by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. I can't tell you where that's going. I don't know, but for budgeting purposes, if it's anything like the public safety complex, we're going to have a dog in that hunt. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know to what extent, and of course we'll fight and argue the entire way, but we should have some funds available for that. And some additional groundwater monitoring <coughs> sampling that's going to be required as a part of that. Um, so yes, ma'am, at this present time, we, we most likely will be involved in, in some sort of monitoring at the landfill, um, and we hope it ends this year. Okay. And Vice Mayor, we do, um, I have a meet meeting later, I think it might be this week with Mr. Peters on some future uh, ideas for the landfill. I also am holding a uh, unsolicited offer that I plan to bring to the commission, I believe the first uh, meeting in September uh, to discuss that and possibly whatever Mr. Peters brings to my attention this week. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay. Um, are there any other questions for general public works for enterprise funds? And if, if you have line item stuff going down that you, I, I know Commissioner Matheson had written on his like it's going down the sheet and it's yeah. difficult to flip back and right. forth from all the accounts. Uh, Mr. Peters group will still be here. So after we're done, we can round robins if we want to go down there and see what else we've missed, we can, can do that. Bring the, the Lamar signs. The billboards, yes. yes. 
may involve Mr. Mortel, our agreement with it. We're doing some of the maintenance on that. How's the lease structured? Where basically is, is that all city's responsibility for some of this maintenance? Or in reality, we're not going to be doing any maintenance on the Monterey portion of the sign, but the sign on in Haney Creek yeah. has some maintenance for us because it is Haney Creek in the sensitive nature of it. But we've got a clause in it that they will pay us up to five hundred dollars a year as we maintenance expenses we incur related in and around the sign and quite frankly we haven't met five hundred dollars in a year yet so it's they've covered that expense the only downside to it is we have to itemize the maintenance and do it associated with the sign whereas if we're doing a Haney creek project it's hard to do that okay but so in we're reality that maintenance it's just the trimming, sensitive area it's just yeah. trimming the view shed mm -hmm. essentially okay. um, other than that it may fall under the public works and you may fall under CRA, Mr. Mayor. Um, Main Street. Our question building maintenance as it regards to the sports properties down there on Flagler and the hurricane shutters. And yes. It's maybe potentially more beneficial in the long term to, to look at impact windows versus the shutters. Or, are they accordion shutters though? I mean, what's the man out? They are, they are. Milton, would they be accordion shutters? Yes. Yes, they are. Okay, so they'd be pretty low man hours compared to panel shutters. Yes, that's uh -huh. what we plan to do. Okay. Now I know our CRA has, you know, helped other local businesses out with impact windows in the past with grants. And for the long term, you know, Maybe this is something that could be budgeted as is, but maybe we might want to consider, you know, using CRA in the future for impact windows over accordion shutters. Well, then I had to fly for that Burke grant. You know, that's CRB. They don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> we have right. We have to say deny it. <laughs> they probably would. I know I would. That's a that's a great uh, a great thought. Uh, Commissioner, and I, I wonder if um, because of the sensitive nature of those historic properties, we might want, you know, we might want to take that up through the CRB anyway, the, the Historic Preservation Board, and see if perhaps we could have uh, Ms. Lockhart or another another representative of kind of the Stuart Historical Society that could give this us... Would be some that would be maybe leave it at the budget as right. is, but take a look at it. And just do a quick cost benefit sure. analysis of impact windows versus the accordion. Or Bahamas or something that would look nice and be effective. And Understanding this budget takes October 1st, hurricane season doesn't start till what, April? Mm -hmm. We got time. Perfect. To look at that. The lease, that was everything I have again, but we'll see as I go through my notes. May I ask a question while Mr. Matheson was asking about the Flagler Center? Yes, Vice Mayor. What is what, Mr. Peters, what is the history of any damage to that building during hurricane or storms such as Michael or some other storms that have come close to the, the shoreline? Roof. Have we had any damage history to those windows or to anything else? Milton, I'd have to defer to you. Nothing major. Just the roof, right? Yeah, just a... a uh, Typical rain event with a flat roof. You're going to get rain on the inside of the building. I think that's happened before. We've been. And that building is over 80 years old. Over. It's been there since World War. I don't know. I. I'm after the I was there from in the 40s, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh, one thing that we didn't talk about is. Uh, is a uh, resiliency plan for Flagler Park. We're in the middle of that now. We're working on trying to get grant funding for that. So that certainly will play an important role in what happens to Flagler Center and how we deal with Flagler Park. All right, I'd like Mr. Matheson to go line by line. If he has other things, then I can probably piggyback on some of his stuff. Oh, uh, not yet, Vice Mayor. Well. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> is that all for Ms. Peter's group? I believe so. Okay, I see we're doing stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Stick around. Thank you. Don't go far. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll be. <laughs>
You come accustomed to that back room. Yeah. Pizza will be here in 15 minutes. Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah right. They got soda back there. Next up, sir, we have uh, the police department with Chief Tumano. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon. Joe Tuminelli for the record. How's everybody today? Thank you. Good. Oh, thank, thank you, sir. You? you? I'm doing fine. So, um, accomplishments, police department, and budget. So, this year was a very intriguing and interesting year. Uh, but I had, do have some really good news regarding the police department. We showed a 16% reduction in crime. Is it COVID related? Very well possible. COVID related also poses other problems for us in community events as well. So being a community based police department, we have shown a little bit of reduction in community services. Um, I would like to start by giving some information, some really good news that we have accomplished this year. Uh, recently, uh, last week, we went through a FCA, Florida Commission on Accreditation assessment for the standard of the police department. This will be our 15th year, which is called the Excelsior Award. Um, this started with Chief Morley through Chief Dias, and I had the luxury of getting the 15 year Excelsior. We were approved and will be recognized in October. Uh, I am very proud of my department for that. And the standards, if you're interested, I can explain to you on another occasion exactly what they are. Thank you, sir. And we are very proud of you and the department as well. So in addition to, um, we talked about the community-based uh, stuff. COVID poses a huge problem for our community. Uh, so we've been, my CR unit has been coming up with some programs that do social distancing, like pop-up barbecue, barbecue drive-throughs, and et cetera. So we didn't have as many community events, but we are still looking forward with that. In addition, um, this year combined with next year, um, we've been having some issues, not necessarily issues, but talks with the Martin County Sheriff's Office regarding uh, antiquated software, records management system, CAD, uh, computer computer aided dispatch systems. So uh, we are in last meeting, I believe it was. You guys, uh, the commission approved uh, a one lump sum payment for the new CAD system. Now this process is going to take probably 18 months to implement. We are in the infantile stages right now of going through it. We're, we're taking the antiquated software and updating it. Sorry, my mask keeps falling. And updating it into uh, the 20th century per se. Um, the cost that we got this software with uh, was very good in comparison to some quotes that we had uh, prior. The agreement between the sheriff's office and us uh, just payment was done, but we will be uh, going through the logistics of how we're sharing. So there's a large amount of work that still needs to be done with this project. It's, probably, it's going to be our biggest project, and uh, I'm very proud of that as well. Um, I've created a project manager for that, and uh, they are, as a matter of fact, starting again. They'll be uh, going through the records management system. In addition to that, um, making the city of Stewart safe and Martin County as well, um, we moved some radio traffic and radio tra channels around for emergency situations. There was a requirement earlier in the year that we, um, by law, because of the, um, the Parkland shooting, uh, that we combine and have the ability to talk to each piece app. So we also accomplished that as well. We got that, got that signed with the Martin County Sheriff's Office. So as for, as for the budgets and operating expenses, um, after city manager Dias dissected it, um, we, uh, I'm very satisfied as well. 
on what is in my budget at this point. Um, and I also want to touch on a couple other things as well um, after that. But anything in the budget that you have a question about, can certainly answer. Um, entirely. Are there any? I'd like to thank you for this Tyler maintenance agreement with the county. And I talked with you and Mr. Dias. It seems like the best thing for our officers, residents, as well as cost savings to what we were looking at prior. A couple of things that struck me were the the boat lift, uh, unfortunately not in this budget, and the new boat. I understand that that's tied to the fine grant application, which you know, understandably the city didn't even get this last fiscal year for Shepherd's Park, but I hope that is still in the future. <laughs> It is. There was there were discussions of it, so, but not this year, obviously. Yeah. No, I I love to see that happen, uh, but I do understand the manager's recommendations mm -hmm. and why that's not there. And I'm I'm happy to see you're hear you're satisfied with the budget. Yeah, I I could tell that uh, mm -hmm. that you must have had a couple. A couple arguments over some of the things, but I see that in many of the different line items outside of personnel that the manager, you worked with the manager to, to reduce some of those costs beyond asks. Um, so I appreciate you working through that. I know that there are a couple items that are a little higher than others, but we, we do see some reductions in other categories, talking about operating supplies. Um, let's see, you know, and then just the, the miscellaneous, the miscellaneous expenses that we have listed out here. Uh, so, you know, I appreciate you working with the with the manager to cut a couple of those costs. Just for edification on some of those um, line items. I mean, 535, for instance, your uh, software that investigation uses was moved from a different account. Right. So that's showing some increases there. It's not that it was increased 100%. It was just moved from a different account. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Vice Mayor. I miss. I, I. I don't. I don't think the city manager is doing the Zoom. Probably somebody else is. But I don't see the ability. Normally, I see the ability to raise my hand at the bottom of my screen. For the screen, the process that I'm working through, I don't see that. So I'm just putting up my hand. Speak up. I'm sorry. I'll try to keep an eye on you too. Okay. So for um um Chief Tuminelli, I'm on page ninety nine. Account number 190, I guess. No, it's their division. But I'm looking at the seized property, the police education, and judgments, and the current audited amount, and then those zeros in 2020, and then nothing forward. Are we not expecting to get any revenues from those areas? 11, uh, 1192, Ms. Vice Mayor. Is that what you're talking about? Um, Page 99, 1194, 1196. Yeah, she's in police special revenues. Yeah, the special revenue. 1194. She's looking at the, on um, page 99 of the revenues. The Seize revenue the property. I, the problem is I don't have a page number so we, on here. Yeah. Madam, Madam Vice Mayor, we don't, we, he's not projecting out any of those seizures because that would be an expectation that we're going to go out and make seizures. So, so they're, they're going to support a system. Yeah, I, I understand. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to be, to, to, to just point that out. Okay, so they're just what they are and when they happen, then they get put into the special revenue funds. Yeah, the police education one though should have uh, a projection. Projection. That's on the revenue side. I don't, I don't, I don't see it yet, but so we, we will uh, we will look at that. Just, okay. But he did. Now let me ask you: Did you make any savings in the past few months, Chief Tuminelli? Since you didn't do a lot of uh, community outreach, you said that you had, you know, with due to COVID, you didn't get some of the programs that you normally would get done under the um, community policing. Is there any money that you have left over? 
um, there is some money. I mean, one of the big things is uh, National Night Out. Um, okay, we didn't do that. Then last week of the beginning of August, um, in addition to back to school bash. So a large amount of those we do receive donations and, and it's funded that way. But we do you know, have to allocate the manpower to run those uh, events as well. So as for money being left over, yes, there is a little bit of money left over. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That I can't tell you exactly how much, but there is. Thank you. Um, Chief, you mentioned that um, there would be a little reduction in some of that community services side. How about the gang prevention? Um, I didn't see it as a line item in there that the gang prevention programming we have at 10th Street. So that is funded by Children's Services Council, and that's through a grant. So there's no, as far as nobody's told me, there was any reduction there. Sure. So, and the, uh, Mr. Manager, three year grant? Three years. Community CSC service. grant time frame? Is that three years? And yet, a lot of you guys agree to apply. It's in here, Youth Intervention Officer Grant. Yeah. You've got two more years before kind of reapplying this category. So that is still fully operational okay, and great. running well. Yes, it is. Yes, Vice Mayor. Okay. <clears throat> I probably didn't see this. Maybe it's under some type of capital thing, but I'm asking both Chief Tuminelli and the former police chief, who is now the current city manager, um maybe i'm i don't know this information because i've forgotten and it was given to me previously <clears throat> but in in the past we had made a move to put all the police cars in a certain wrap and have a certain label on them um did we get all of that done for all our police cars or the old white cars we're not gonna change any colors or do anything new to them did that is, is that an old program? Maybe we took care of it a long time ago. I'm just wondering. I didn't see any money in here for that type of improvement to add anything. There is um, the the design has not changed. We went from the white cars to the black and white cars. That went from that started three or four years ago under Chief Dias. Are all the white cars gone? That's what you're the, gone. the white cars are not all gone yet. They will be gone, I believe, at the end of this year. Okay. Thank you. And how, how, like, can I ask you, how is code enforcement going with your department? Are you going to split that again or are you going to keep it? I am, I am uh, keeping the code enforcement department. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> how was that? Sorry. Did I miss anything? No. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Vice Mayor. There are no other general questions for Chief. We'll, we'll reserve him in case we touch on him again during a line item. I wanted to ask him. Yes, Commissioner. I know at one time we wanted a boat. Um, can we get a boat or not? We we are going to pursue a boat next budget year through the fine grant. Um, we tried last year, we were not approved. Um, and obviously we don't have the money this year. So we, we will definitely pursue it as uh, Commissioner Matheson said, um, we will definitely look for that through the fine grant. That's a match grant, I believe. Yes, uh, I think we could use that, especially um, with the river and, and you know, tying in the, the algae and all that. We do have two. We have, we do have two boats right now. We're looking for at least one good one. So. And, and I understand. I want to be more conservative too. Uh, next year we'll look at it. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. And that's the fire rescue chief. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, former chief. <laughs> Chief. Chief. How are you? Yes, very good. Thank you. You? All right, good. From my assistant, Chief Bowser. Uh, we're just going to, I'll start off with just continuing our work since we're kind of on the vehicle capital thing. That's a huge thing for our department in sure. 2020. 
and we're very um, appreciative of the manager and the commission for that. So uh, we have a new fire engine being currently built now. They're behind because of COVID. Of course, uh, it was slated to be delivered this fiscal year, but now it's going to be pushed back until at least the end of this year, probably January. But um, just so for everybody's clarification on that, the last time we bought a, a fire engine, you know, to, with this, not a ladder truck, not a mini pumper, but a fire engine was 1997. So as a class one fire department that we are, and everybody enjoys that, to, to be running a 23 year old fire engine first out every day has been a challenge. Um, our call load in the past 10 years has doubled from 3,500 to almost 7,000. Um, so our mechanics, um, the garage, the county, our agreement, everything has done an awesome job. It's um, as he knows, because he deals with it daily, is keeping the fleet in service on the road has been a huge challenge. So, and that will kind of take us into 21 with the new ambulance as well. So we currently have four ambulances. Um, you know, one is an 18 we got to replace an old one a couple years ago. And we still have an 05, an 06, and an 07. And we're trying to run three ambulances. And that's a challenge because, um, you know, there, there's always something wrong with them. So that is, that'd be a huge blessing, you know, going into 21 to get that as well. Um, so for us in 20, that's huge. You know, the, the fire engine was a huge deal. Um, it's something that's definitely needed and everybody appreciates because of the age thing, like I said. Um, we were also able to replace, replace our breathing air machine um, in 20 in this year's budget that we already have in service. And Mr. Dye saw that. It's an awesome, beautiful piece of equipment that the city was able to get for us um, that refills the air bottles that firefighters wear in the fires. So that's a very special, specialized piece of equipment. So we were able to do that. Those are two huge, very expensive items for 20. Um, so for 21 leading into that is, you know, the new ambulance is definitely needed um, because of that age and trying to keep everything going. We have the two FTEs that are in there that kind of take us into this rescue three um, thing. So we currently run, you know, two ambulances and two fire trucks. In 2019, we were able to, the past couple years, starting in probably 17, we added an extra person and then 18, we added a couple um, with the goal of getting to where we're at in 21. So we can add a full-time extra ambulance, an additional ambulance. So we'll be running three citywide 24 seven. And the goal with that, of course, is it's a, it does generate revenue as, as an ambulance transport unit. And it also ties into the trying to maintain this equitable balance of call load when Martin County and our interlocal agreement because that was one of the big ticket items that they specified was, you know, if they send an ambulance into the city of Stewart 30 times a day and we send one into the county once, that's not equal. Yeah. So right now, and really we're seeing it and we were able to get data for all, in all of 2019, we ran that extra ambulance as we could with staffing provided a little bit of overtime, you know, to try to get some of this data. We ran it 37%. And, you know, it did 351 transports, did that revenue, really helped to offset that equitability with the county and they appreciate it. I can tell you that for a fact. Um, that ambulance is in the county all day, just like theirs are in ours. You know, so we're, it's, it's a really good agreement. Everything is working out great with that. There's no money exchange. Whoever does the transport gets to build the patient. So it's a good system. So that's our, that's our big items for 21 is to get that ambulance staffed 24 seven and to get that new truck in here to help the oldest one in the fleet for the ambulances. Thank you. And I'm Anybody happy to any answer. Yeah. I see our vice mayor has her hand up. Yes. Yes, um, Chief Pellis. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is our budget meeting and everybody's concerned about what they pay their taxes for and the services that they get. Can you again emphasize for us as a city when we provide services to our residents, what it means to have a class one rating? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and how important it is to maintain that? Yeah, absolutely. The the ISO class one rating was it was a huge ordeal that we got a couple of years ago, and that the town of Sewell's Point actually enjoys along being under contract with us. And you know, so we have to balance it every so often because it does take a lot of training, and it takes a lot of we're we're really busy, like I just mentioned. So we're the crews are busy all day. We have to train a lot every day. We've got to hear that a lot from the crews, but it takes a lot of different aspects to maintain and have the the proper um, recertification for that ISO rating. And the fact that all, you know, all residents and business owners in Tools Point and of course in the city get to appreciate whatever discounts their the underwriting process allows. Um, Again, it's just a huge thing for this area with really, um, I think, Town of Palm Beach, maybe City of Delray and City of Orlando to the north are the only ones, except for us. So it's a, it's a huge ordeal and it's something that I know everybody's proud of, but it does take a lot to maintain it. So we do a lot of training, do a lot of records, do a lot in our fire prevention with fire inspections and plan reviews and a lot with, you know, the development department and it's, it is a lot kind of behind the scenes, but luckily it's, we don't get evaluated for another three, three or four years. So uh, we can try to get our stuff together by then, but thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you for the service of our firefighters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Well, I mean, I've spoken with a few um, about the fire truck a uh, number of times. We need to have the, the the machinery, the infrastructure we need to serve our community, and so I'm glad we're you know, getting with the program. Yeah, and it's obviously a big expense, Thank but how can you run a fire department without the proper fire trucks? So, yeah, and it's um, been uh, our mechanics and county mechanics and city mechanics. They they all do an awesome job because it's a full time job. Yeah, and you're managing with the delay as best you can, unfortunately. Yeah, we just do a lot of a lot of round robin, you know, a lot of swap outs and the crews don't like us very much, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> There's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. They're gonna be oh, very appreciative to hear that, yes. Can you talk about this training center that got reduced? Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, even about the fire, fire map? training? Yeah, that was- Slide 64. Yeah. So, yeah. So behind the public safety complex, we have uh, we just we have a training area. It's called um, just just like a concrete pad. We have a couple connex boxes back there. That's been a popular thing in the fire service for training. Um, we can do a variety of things in those boxes. Fill them up with artificial smoke, and we have a sprinkler system in them. It's you know, we do a lot of different things. Um, it's always nice to have another one you know you can kind of stack the boxes up and make them into like a house and all of that um it's not a necessity you know we, we we do get all of our training like you know out of the out of what we have now it was kind of like you know we we understand that we have to do some cuts so clearly that, ambulance would be a top sure yeah so everybody priority. everybody understands yeah we would like to expand that um yeah. but you know we're, we just, understand the, the just as a reminder, the county is building a training facility yeah. there over by the airport. Right. And I have been talking with uh, Ms. Krizza about that and the funding sources that are coming to, for the build of that um, is not, from what I understand, coming from MSPU. So I would be pushing for our shared equality for usage. Absolutely. And they they have luckily, you know, myself and Chief Sobel, and we know they would ex extend that out and, you know, for us to come train together and all that. Yeah. Well, um, thank you again for the hard work your team did for the ISO rating. Thank you. We're very proud to have ISO number one here. Thank you. Thank you. Just number one. Thank you. Community services. All right, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. Number one. Hmm. Jim Kowalski, Community Services Director. For the record. And I wanted to give you a brief background about community services and where it's come from, where it's gone to. As many of you weren't here, I know the Vice Mayor was here during some of these changes. Um, community services was um, enhanced um, 
back in 2016 when some of the functions from the city manager's office under Paul Nicoletti's time um, was then merged into what was traditionally known as the recreation department. So it's a very broad dynamic department. And the easiest way for you to be able to understand it is that there's very there's four components to it, and I'll go through those. Under 1240 in your budget, you'll notice that that's our recreation uh, and public services division, probably the one that you're most familiar with only because of the community center and what we do with the kids. This is the going on the 20th year that we've been fully funded with the Children's Services Council. Um, the largest funded organization, I might add, anywhere within the county itself. And this year through COVID, um, we were able to get an additional $58,000 in order to be able to mitigate some of the children over at the shuffleboard court and over at the flagboard court again. So <clears throat> we're very thankful to uh, the city's contribution with that program as well as the Children's Services Council. Um, some other things that we've added this year uh, were under the motivation primarily with David Dias. We wanted to make sure, and also Vice Mayor Clark, we had a new athletics program in which we implemented, as well as a community outreach program as well. So those functions are going very well. We were really seriously on to a real big start as far as all of our athletics play that we had there, um, you know, until COVID hit. As a matter of fact, um, we doubled our athletic um, rentals over on our field through that time period and enhanced pretty much every sport you can think of, um, including soccer and lacrosse and just a bunch of different things over there. Uh, the rest of these are organized under 1242, which are communications, legislative affairs, and uh, environmental, as well as economic strategies, fundraising and development, and special events, tourism, public art, and uh, design and special projects. So I'll go through each one of those and let you know that what our accomplishments were. And then at the very end, I will pass out to you our goals that we have set for the next year. Um, under the uh, communications, as you know, the uh, commission adopted a communications plan three years ago now. And since then, we've implemented a, a public information officer that works alongside with the public information officer that the police department has. But deals primarily with some of the functions that we have here at City Hall. Um, with that, we have newsletters. We make sure that we address the uh, media in a very professional way. We always find out you know, who's going to be a short straw when they have to go on television and explain to somebody some bad news. <laughs> so now we've got that one resolved as well. Um, and um, some of the other um, projects that were identified specifically um, by this commission with our environmental affairs. And of course, uh, Commissioner Matheson is working very strongly with that, along with Ben Hogarth, who's been assigned to those duties and we've been working on projects and it's lonesome, so you're caught up on all those things relatively uh, to, to current. A few years back, we started a legislative affairs initiative. It was primarily done under the city manager's office and the department was put together. That was something that we retained and every year we're able to go to Tallahassee along with you guys and make sure that any of the various bills that would have any kind of positive or negative effects on the city of Stewart, we, we would then advocate or um, make sure that we're um, getting them to see the benefit to uh, home rule and all the various things that would be important for our city. This year we, we hired a, a lobbyist. The last year actually we hired a lobbyist which came back with $250,000 this year with the lobbyists' um, connections. We've got a million dollars. Um, most of that credit goes to the lobbyists, but we were certainly there making sure that every step of the way that that process was there to make sure that, that was an easy process for him as well. Um, on our economic strategy, we traditionally we had the Stewart Main Street program. And since that program, we um, decided that that was gonna be better suited for the nonprofit organization to run that program. So that is now being done, but we do have a, um, an agreement with them that we make sure that all those different compliances are being met so that we know that we're getting our deliverables and that summary was given actually as of last Friday. Um, the, uh, we work strongly with the Business Development Board and as you're probably the project you're most familiar with that we work with them was our post-COVID recovery program 
which was not only to let people know about um, all the resources that were available to the businesses and um, property owners, but also to the We're Ready uh, video campaign that we put together for them as well to try and kickstart the economy again. Um, under special events, there was a time where we had 300 special events a year. I can't say that today. <laughs> Breaks my heart. So, um, you know, until further notice, you, you know, we have decided to kind of suspend those things now, which is, you know, not been easy because we're getting into season. We're going to have to really, you know, address that so far. But thus far, we've been just telling people that we're in a state of uh, uh, migration. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're not approving any events. Um, however, it's nice to know that um, those events were all locked up. Uh, so we have about half of those. I mean, they directly were affected COVID. Um, under the special project side, um, there was a time where I worked with the city manager's office. So we, at the department, are always here to making sure that any of the special projects that the city manager has. Um, that we're there to run to help in hand on any of these uh, things that come up on a daily basis or a weekly basis. So that's that as far as the path. We do have um, nine full-time employees and we have 12 part-time employees between those two different departments. And we also have currently four vehicles. I'm going to go ahead and pass these guys. That's a at the end of every year, in September, I give a complete summary of all the accomplishments that we've done as a department. It's fairly lengthy, so hopefully I was able to hit some of those hot buttons for you. And this is a, um, a goal sheet that we set out in these new times with COVID. And I wanted to thank uh, Vice Mayor Clark because, <laughs> Vice Mayor, I don't know if you can hear me well, but, you know, I use your strategic plan that you advocated for many moons ago, and right now we're getting near to the year 2024, and I was giving you a copy of this. I know you can't see it now, um, but I pretty much go through that entire strategic plan, and I highlight the things that pertain to our department in blue, and we set the course based upon the strategic plan. It's, as you know, community services is a very dynamic program. It's not like, you know, a public works department or a police department where their vision and their mission is very, very steadfast. Ours has a tendency of being able to go ahead and grow and change. And so I want to make sure that we're able to set the course clearly so that we know that the taxpayer dollars are being used wisely according to the plan that was adopted by the commission. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Does anyone have any questions specifically about why I'm giving the Tenth Street or the community services? I um, I was just uh, questioned our um, estimation, the request and the recommendation for special events revenues. Mm -hmm. We still have it in there as listed as being, if I'm looking in the right place, thirty four seven four hundred. Um, is being at 36. In fact, the manager recommended revenues were up a little bit for that. Um, am I I'm expecting a big comeback? Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I put an asterisk on one of those sheets there saying you know, this is all kind of COVID related. Right. I, mean, uh, I know we're not counting, I mean, it's not like we're counting on that revenue source, but I think, you know, mm -hmm. our, our budget is our sets our priorities and also our view of reality. And while I hope that we can get through COVID, within the next several months. Um, I think I just, I wanna make sure that we're not counting on those uh, on those special events permit dollars because mm -hmm. in all likelihood, they're, they're not gonna be there and that, at least in that same way. Um, when, do, when do we plan on, or not plan, but projecting of when we move into the building that we just bought, the city's bought? So that projection really is based on the bank um, they have I've talked to their regional vice president in Orlando. They are actively looking for another location to go. Um, the, the building, their inside office is still closed. You walk over there, you can't walk inside. Um, so I know they are actively looking, and I know where they're looking. And originally, the negotiations at that location fell through, but now the property manager there, and so those negotiations are now back open. Um, so I'm not sure at that time. I'm estimating three to five years. Okay, because I was also thinking 
well, it's been three years, right? But um, the cost of all that moving over there. So I guess we've got plenty of time. To and, and I already have funding allocated, um, some, some that is uh, out there in the wings to come and some that is already in the bank um, to take care of both renovations and Okay, thanks, David. Absolutely. Um, and Mary, that what I wanted to do is let you know that our when we reduced the amount of the cost for the pavilion rentals, which was an important thing for us to do, we recognized that more people would utilize those. So pre-COVID, our numbers actually doubled, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it actually looks good now. You know, I have no way of being able to anticipate what we're, you know, up against here, but you know, um, I think lowering those prices, not only did it make it more affordable, but I think it really kind of kept the honesty factor in check as well, because people would call up and say, is it available? And then they'd go out there and they wouldn't pay us anything because they were too high. Right. So by lowering it made them want to preserve it. I mean, do I have any questions for community so service? Yes, question. We look forward to being able to have Record numbers of special events again. <laughs> Vice Mayor, yes. Yes. So, Mr. Kralski, under item number 1242, um, line 515, special pay. Um, I'm not sure if I'm, oh, those numbers are bigger than the other thing that I looked at before. David, I need to look at it. Okay. Um, maybe that's not the one that I'm. Anyhow, I just thought that if if there was um, it didn't seem like you you don't have a lot of um. What is special pay for? Because it's not for overtime. Vice Mayor, um, as part of the budget presentation, we talked to the manager this year has decided to go away from awarding a percent increase uh, with the employee's evaluation and go back to a lump sum amount, which saves the city money in the long run by awarding a single lump sum. That's where that amount gets plugged. So as you can see there in the 20 budget and last year, there wasn't this increase. Uh, it's only there this year because that's where we plan to run these lump sum amounts through to the employees. That That's across all the departments with employees. That's the amount was increased by the lump sum payments. Okay, and and I know that this is budget, but Jim, good or bad, it could be a plug for your department. How are things been? How have things been handled over the summer under COVID nineteen? And what is your um, satisfaction level with how the staff has handled things over the summer? I think the staff has been phenomenal, honestly. And I, I don't even hesitate when I say that. We had some challenges as all summer camps did. And I think we were kind of the canary in the coal mine for the school board as well. So at our highest point, um, we had about 90. At our lowest point, we had between eight and 12. But what we had to do is make sure that every time that we had an incident that we mitigated those situations so that no one else would be exposed and had that two week duration. So it was a very short period, you know, through summer. So, you know, whenever you take a 14 day space, you know, it does kind of affect things. So uh, I would say vice mayor, I was very, very proud of the staff. They didn't even hesitate to go into a um, unknown environment and face things head on. Okay. As to um, the rest of 10th Street under um, 1242, I guess maybe that's uh, city manager, but I'm just talking about the general um, continuing to do repair and maintenance there and um, those other current um, charges with the athletic programs and so on. Is there any expansion um, with those numbers? Uh, probably the, the additional funds, is there any expansion that you're doing in terms of your athletic programs? This year, and I didn't mention it, I probably should have, is that we're um, 
in the process of um, moving, completing the covered basketball courts that are over at the 10th Street. So last year, we had $250,000 in our capital budget, in which we do not have this year. And those resources will be utilized for that. And we are, we weren't really sure if we were going to do it, you know, with COVID and, you know, we had the money. And so we thought it was important for us to be able to move forward on that capital project. We're working on that right now, Vice Mayor. So that's like what, two years early? Or at least a year early? Covered basketball? No, that, that's actually in this fiscal year 20. Okay, okay. So program in this. And then in fiscal year 21, the uh, resurfacing of the tennis courts and the double basketball courts over there are both in the 21 budget. Okay, okay. Get that one through first. All right. Um, um, Jim, what's the effectiveness of the the marquee in alerting citizens and is there anything that needs to be done to make that more effective or we had a little bit of a challenge through last year um the, the motherboard was acting funny but that's been since fixed and uh i'm looking at julie to making sure that i was correct in saying that so we are in fact um the marquee is working fine now um so you know, we, we do plug in different community messages on that. Um, we, you know, it's limited with what you can say. We also um, control some service announcements on our digital billboard as well on US-1. So any of those um, requests that come in, like some of the, the business development board just had a recent one, you know, as far as some things, we'll always go ahead and package that um, and put that on our digital billboard. So that plus our, our new, um, newsletter i'm sure you all get the newsletter um our various ones and of course we're always on our social media pages being able to update the public on that as well did that answer your question vice mayor yes sir and may i congratulate you and also miss julie as well and all the staff and also mr hogart on the coordination with the environmental information and the public service information especially with regard to our environment and and the you know, our water issues. So I, I, I appreciate you um, working to coordinate all of those and still keep up with the legislative matters. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. While we're on the subject of 10th Street, and um, I'm glad that our Commissioner Bruner brought up thinking kind of out there as it pertains to City Hall and the eventual move, I'm thinking about the eventual um, innovations and build out of 10th Street. Um, I know that right now the city manager has been working with the, um, the designers on a, on a plan. Um, so I guess, you know, obviously it's not this year, it's going to be a multi-year approach, but are you, um, we'll, we'll be looking, I'm sure, into working with the Children's Services Council to have some more grant funds come in for that larger space for more programming. Um, is it a function we can of apply um, the way it works is that there's different cycles and it has to be specific to well in this case it's the after school type of programming every they change their cycle so every three years now well, it's actually four years by the time it rolls out but we go before them to let them know what our track record is what our success is what our SAMUS numbers are all of our metrics um, we the, remember when the uh, the chief was talking about the um, intervention piece. That one was done last year. For us, it was done this year. And that's one of the reasons why we have a three year cycle. Three year window. Okay. So it's three years from the time period. We could, you know, consider doing that, but we just need to be sensitive that we are the highest funded program that children's services. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that, that remodel is more about athletics and recreation yeah. and not necessarily about the child care program that we provide through CSC. So kind of more really programmatic. Recently. There's Mr. programming and facilities. Sure. Mr. Trolsky. Yes, sir. Do you have a time frame on the, the Boys and Girls Club? Is that going to have any potential impact this fiscal year or as far as their building? That's I, that a couple years out or any idea? We've been meeting with the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club. I don't think yet they have to, you know, kind of get some more money together to even okay. think about. Yeah, that's kind of stalled. I don't know where they're at yeah, with that anymore. We're just, at this point, we're just moving forward and uh, 
sticking to our same plan. Sticking to our same plan right now. Keeping in communication with yeah, keeping in and communication. Club. And we do, in fact, you know, I talk to the executive director on occasion, as does the city manager. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. As Mr. Freeman comes up from the development department, I just want to say that the, the remainder of the departments are smaller and they are um, more a service entity to the other departments. So if you have anything for those other departments, I'd be happy to call them up. Or if they are itching to want to come up and talk, I'll, I'll do that as well. But otherwise, uh, Mr. Freeman would be my last caller to the table. I'm available to defer my time. I bet you are. <laughs> only, if you're, only if you're very itchy, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So as you all know, our uh, development department consists of a number of various services. We have planning, building, uh, CRA and GIS within that space. And I'm sorry, Polly, one second. Just to clarify, CRA will be having their own budget presentation come before you on the 24th. So just yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we serve, staff there serve or help uh, a various number of boards, uh, including yourselves. We have the local planning agency, Community Redevelopment Agency and Community Redevelopment Board and the Board of Adjustment. We also liaise very closely with um, other parts of the city in terms of the development review process, public works, police, fire, um, and the city attorney. I have to mention that, it did take a struggle, but I'll be happy. Um, <laughs> So uh, over the last, so we were looking at the last 10 months of this fiscal year, um, the department processed 5,500 uh, plans, which were reviewed. Now that's a 10% decline on what we saw the same period last year, but you could probably apportion that to a degree of COVID and the uncertainty of the economy in that respect. During the same time period, we, we processed 6,000 site inspections. Um, which resulted really with the addition of about $90 million of new property value within the city. That is very comparable to last year. And the forecast for the coming year would be very similar because as you are aware, through this year we've approved a number of, uh, well you have approved a number of quite large developments and if they come online, then there will be some substantial value added to the city's property um, inventory. Um, so during that time, we presented, we've come in front of you and other boards 120 times with various items, um, public hearings, presentations, amendments. Um, we looked at the land development code and, and sought out innovations within the code, really pressing on the environmental, um, the attainable housing pieces. And we want to move that forward into the next fiscal year. We've um, undertook the city's comprehensive plan appraisal and uh, evaluation uh, that's been submitted we're hoping to get some feedback we've already started to get some feedback which has not been really substantial so we're very hopeful about getting that done fairly quickly uh, in terms of the number of major development reviews that we've seen again looking at the comparison between this year and last year we're up 130 percent over what we got in last year um, if you look at a 10 year period of averages, we're, we're up 150% of what we had of during those 10 years. So there's been a steady um, increase in development applications. And with all those that you see, there are many, many more that come in and have to go through a review process or a little um, meeting with staff or some information that comes forward. So staff have been very, very busy handling and fielding all those things. So coming up for the next year, we want to continue um, the improvement of the department. We want to structure better in terms of the, the, uh, the, the value that the commission and other boards get out of um, the reports that are coming forward to the various uh, entities. We want to consolidate our relationships with the other departments. We uh, pride ourselves in, in trying to form a one-stop shop for applicants when they come in so we can connect them with various other pieces of the city um, as they come to ask about what they could develop. Um, overall, we're looking at a budget which is um, just over 9% less than last year. Really more with less. Much more with less. <laughs> Much more with less. Anyone have any questions? On Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Yes, uh, Vice Mayor. 
And is that is that our building our building department also everything is included in community development? Um, we've included uh, yes, all those pieces. You'll be seeing a separate CRA if you item come forward to the CRA um, to report. I tend to uh, keep an eye on the job postings. Uh, <laughs> Just to see looking what, for a job. <laughs> looking, for a job. <laughs> looking for something that'll pay. And uh, um, I did notice that there's a, a building inspector position open. And so right. I don't, is, uh, is Mr. Nicolosi still, um, is he on, on his way to retirement or? No, it's not mixed. Uh, it's not Mr. Nicolosi, it's a building inspector. Okay. Which is, uh, we, we have two positions for building inspectors in the city. Um, at the moment, we've been fielding most of those with Mr. Nicolosi being able to go out when he can to do inspections. Um, one of the previous building inspectors has, you know, has had some issues recently, so it's likely that they're not returning. We did have them on contract for a while. Okay. Um, there is gonna be a struggle in fulfilling that position because of the uh, demand for that type of sure. um, employee throughout the state. Yeah, I mean, the reason I ask about in particular like that is to your point of doing more with less, we all wish we could, but the statistics you're throwing at us, reviewing 5,000 yeah. development applications and doing conducting 1,000 building inspections in a fiscal year, it's a 6, lot. 6,000. 6,000, yeah. okay, so. <laughs> it's are, a lot. You, are you saying that it's hard to find them because they're getting paid more money? They're needed in There's other a, places in the state? There is a, because we're such a small city, we, we look for building inspectors that have multidisciplinary licenses. So if you're in a county, you could get a building inspector that has was one license, I plumbing, electrical, or some other AC or HVAC, that would be specialist. As a city, we, we look for people who have multiple disciplines and licenses. And we are very lucky at the moment because both um, both employees that we have there have multiple licenses, um, but we're seeing that it's far, well, it's very, very difficult to accumulate the, the breadth of those licenses with the requirements that are now faced by people qualifying in this area. And many inspectors may only have one or two of those, and it, it's taken them a long time to get those. So what we're facing is looking for something special at a level that is um, comparable to somebody who maybe have just one license in the county. So we, we do insensitize the collection of those licenses for our staff and those are rewarded, but it's still, that's, it's a difficult process. Thanks for telling me that. I don't know how to build a house or start. I would, I would like to say in addition to all of the things that Kev went uh, over that his division is currently engaged in and have done, but they are the most visible division to the commission as they present to you and uh, bring projects to you. And so I think that um, we have to remember that as what their workload bears yeah. uh, in addition to things they have to bring to you guys. I agree, yes. I should mention the GIS services, which has been really incredible behind the scenes and you're likely to see more of that in the future. Mm -hmm. we've, we've managed to grab ourselves a fantastic employee and she's come up with some really cool things. You, you saw the historic buildings talk. Um, and there are other things. She's been working very hard with Public Works yes. um, to develop and map their systems. And she's ongoing with a number of quite incredible ideas that I think you'll see will be. Uh, it sounds exciting. I, I think we're looking forward to the next year. Um, we, uh, I would say that um, the department probably will end up focusing more on economic development because due to the, the COVID issue that we, we've seen, we have done really well in generating interest in residential in the city. And, and part of my own personal strategic plan was to get a better inventory into the city. And you've heard me talk about this in, in the workshops mm -hmm. um, in terms of housing. Now, I think we are gonna have a population that's gonna be able to support more commercial activity. And the city, I think is gonna be in a very good position to attract new commercial activity because we're gonna have a better base of residential occupants. Thanks, thanks for sharing that, Mr. Freeman. Yes, sir, thank you. Yes, thanks, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, Mr. Freeman and Mr. Buglioli, 
Am I am I on item one o one 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 seven on page ninety ninety one? I mean page ninety. Sorry, that's a CRA. One o seven. Sorry, on page ninety. Is that the only page for that department? Am I on the correct page? No, you're you're on revenues for community redevelopment. Right. What, what about the page before that? 90, page 107. Page Just community development. That's page 91, community development, community redevelopment. That's the CRA. Uh, Pinal page, will... 90, page 90. 90 is, uh, well, on this, Jim, it's well, landfill I'm, property. Is this the total of the previous pages? What? I maybe my num my what was that, sir? It's it's a good question, a Vice Mayor. Do you have a specific question about a line item? Or? 107. No, I was just saying that if his was just that one page budget, the rest of it is CRA that's like three pages. I think you'll see development coming from 68 through. Okay, so it's so it's I'm looking at something. And you, I think you're looking at uh, revenues rather than appropriations. Right, yeah, right, okay, all right. Was there All right, fine. That's fine. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Thank Vice Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Freeman. Are there any other departments, the small departments that you guys would like to hear from, or is there any of the small departments that are? Let me look at the, the proposed budget. Any other departments that are itching to talk? Okay. No. Should be. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nice I would. I would say a few things. <laughs> yes, sir. Four. So, if you want to hear, if you have any questions, please answer. Otherwise, we'll address it. Thank you for all. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Bagliari. Mr. Manager, I would I would say a couple things. Since uh, the manager won't speak for himself in this instance, and there's been a couple of uh, statements made during the workshop here, I would just like to point out to people, you know, what what comes next is uh, the actual short of a budget workshop number four. The uh, required by law, tentative millage and budget hearing. You'll, you'll see the final document with the pretty cover and uh, all the graphs and charts. And the complete document with some analysis in it. But uh, I mean, I do have some of that today. And, and just to illustrate, I know there's been some statements. And so I just wanted to let some of you know because we have access to the numbers. In this cut, basically, when you talk about personal services, um, we as the city of Stewart and being a, a local government member of FRS, um, you know, we don't control the FRS plan. The state of the state legislature sets the rates. The health insurance, short of changing the benefit package for the employees, we don't control the rates. Uh, there was a rate increase, as I've said on multiple occasions, it equated to about $90,000. The manager agreed to accept that. Uh, our insurance is a risk pool that we are in with three other local governments. Uh, that rate is mandated to us as well. So really, similar to the revenues, I tell you all the time, the city really only controls ad valorem taxes. The manager can really only control regular salaries, part-time and overtime. And, you know, on, on a perspective of general fund by itself or just all funds, uh, in this balanced budget, in order to balance it, the manager has maintained regular salaries across all funds only went up 2.73%. Uh, Part-time went up 5%, only because we, we brought in some additional programs, but he cut overtime by 10.7%, almost 11% cut in overtime. And by this, this percent increase you saw in special pay, by opting to make those lump sum amounts, that reflects as an increase in that single line item, but that's a one-time payment, which actually reduced the benefits associated with it and that regular salary line. So, you know, of the, of the three or four lines that the manager had control of, he did what he needed to do to get this in here. So this is one of those years where four of our five revenue categories are down from the current budget. Uh, taxes in total are up only 5% and personal services across the entire city is only 4.49% up. So between the puts and takes, you know, you know, I know we like to zero in on single lines, but total this budget is living within our means. We didn't transfer any revenue from you know, any of my hiding places or any kind of fund balance to budget this. We, we took the monies that we were allotted and we made the, we made the expenses fit. So 
I would just like to say, you know, there's some unpopular choices. The department heads have been very kind today. Uh, the manager took a sword to it and, uh, you know, moving the money from a percent increase to a lump sum is not going to be popular with everyone, but it was the right thing to do and it was smart. And so I think we brought it across the finish line balanced. I will tell you, personal services is a moving number. Uh, we may see a couple little changes here and there. Um, I know the manager messaged me a couple things during this meeting, you know, to look at. So uh, if we make any additional changes, they will be minute uh, or de minimis. So, uh, and we'll, we'll highlight those before that final presented budget, but I expect nothing, no other real big surprises to come across my desk or his at this point. So. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate you uh, saying that. I have, um, wanted to ask, how much have we saved in funds uh, not running the trans and paying those drivers full time since we've had this COVID? Well, we got one man running. Uh, Jolie's, I think, over there typing away to um, pull that number up. I mean, I think that's something, uh, and any other funds like that, that would normally we'd be paying out that we're not paying out because of the... Right. Well, that'll be reflected in that final audited budget. Yeah. Right, uh, Mr. Baglioli? Yes, sir. Um, the audit numbers, you know, as uh, I transmitted to your group this week that, you know, we completed the 19 audit, started the 20. So, uh, the you know, we're very quickly getting to the end. And um, we'll have those numbers shortly here on what where the city actually winds up at the end of the year, with and with uh with the COVID included. I'm trying to get where you are right now, Commissioner, on that tram expense. That'll just give you the balance, right? The yeah, percent percent spent. Yeah, spent you, know, yeah, but you, you would expect a certain percent to be spent yeah. by now. I expect it. That's just more money in Pinal's pocketbook anyway <laughs> that came in a CRA. But you still have the fixed cost of the insurance, yes. and the, the golf carts, or the carts, and everything else. So just yes. for the personnel. It's just the personnel. And it's not even going to be 100% of that because there's still some fixed costs associated with current comp and other expenses that won't change regardless of whether they're working. We're about, um, I've, I've said on many times, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mortel is the best financial city attorney I've had in my 25 years here. They're all, so, they're all yeah, he, he, No, he's he's Tell you what, if I'm ever out, you know, he could be the acting guy for a little while. Um, we're only at 80% of that budget. Uh, so, you know, with a, a month and a half left of the year, I would expect that to be, you know, in the 88% range. So, I mean, we're slightly off on the tram operation. But uh, as, the, as the attorney pointed out, yes, there are some fixed costs that get paid, whether the employee's there or not. Um, yeah, they're electric, right? There's no, there's no fuel. Yeah, they're electric. Yeah. Huh? They're, electric. they're electric. Yeah. So yeah, so in the personal services category, it's it's behind, and the operating expense is only at sixty five percent, which is well, well behind where they should be only at this wanna, time of year. I do want to say that in this fiscal year, it'd be time for Pinal to pull out the parking study again and see where we're going with that next phase and with our tram service and see how we're moving yeah. along. Yeah. Sure. Well. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now that we've had a brief presentation from all of the um, departments that would have liked to, um, if uh, I, I want to get to any other line items that the commissioners might have, um, I wanted to also bring up. There's one. There's one uh, uh, account that we that we ourselves. That's the city commission's account, and so that one is the one that I really kind of scrutinize the most uh, this budget cycle. Um, this is especially with regard to our uh, aids to uh, private orgs and our um, governmental agency aids. Um, so, you know, I, I've mentioned before that my approach here is, is kind of on the belt tightening side. Um, we've touched a little bit on Main Street, and I know, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a CRA conversation that we can have. Um, at the CRA budget workshop. Um, but I'm looking primarily at, um, we'll look at page five and six, um, our aides to uh, government agency, the BDB and the housing authority. And then we've got our private orgs. So right now I have a, well, there's a few questions, but then I have something that I'd really like for us all to discuss. Um, the DBA, um, I guess a technical question. Now, is, is the DBA, I tried to trace it through our revenues, is this the, uh, does this have to do with the self, 
taxing district of the the BID or the DID. It's not no. part of the sound left over from the bid. It's a separate agency. It's a, no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Is that left over from the revenue from no. the bid? Okay, so in the 581 account, aids to government agency, the business development board. Uh, just to remind the commission, a couple of commissions ago, you adopted a thing that said you weren't just going to give them the 25,000. They had to submit projects. Sure. We didn't get any. That's why that year to date number is only 18 and the audited 2019 number. Right. We did budget the 25 again. Uh, year to date expense, I'd have to check on for you. But uh, that's why in 19, there was nothing spent because they didn't, they barely submitted any. They got the full. So that's not the uh, assessment. The I'm next one. about the DBA. The DBA is the next one. Oh, oh, yeah, somebody said BDB a second ago, and now, now we're on DBA. That 7,500 down there is the assessment that we collect on their behalf because they can't assess themselves, and that's the match we don't, money. But we don't do that anymore. They didn't but we, we did not do that. So we okay. kept the 7,500, but the assessment fell through. They wanted to expand the district, and they didn't make the deadlines. And so okay. we did not do a special assessment this year for that. That's, so that's, okay, I wanted to clarify that. So we can correct that, obviously, because it won't be collected. It wasn't voted on to be collected for the self -assessment. That That was always a, you know, we assessed about $13,000, and we were supposed to match it with money. Um, no, it's a split. We keep half, they yeah. get half. However, in the current fiscal year we're in, they didn't re-up it either. Right. I don't know if that money was given to them or not, or accidentally given to them. It shouldn't have been. Um, so this downtown business association for 7,500, if that is from the bid assessment, that should be zeroed on the adopted commission side. Um, the reason I bring it up, it's $7,500. <coughs> it's not de minimis, or it is de minimis, you could say, in our overall budget. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because we've got DBA, and then we have Main Street. And I'm sure you all saw uh, the request for 70000 for Main Street. Um, so in the last year, we have sort of changed our relationship with Main Street. We have sort of let Baby Bird fly. They are now managing Flagler Place. And uh, I know that um, the Flagler Center is, it's obviously been challenging for them to find regular event revenue because of COVID. Um, but, uh, you know, it was my understanding that over time, we were going to allow Main Street to sort of go on their own, raise revenue themselves through the operation of Flagler for three years, and we would pull back on our direct uh, direct grant essentially to them. Um, and uh, I know it's a it's a hard time because of that lack of, of revenue coming in, but they don't solely rely on our on our direct assistance. They also do get sponsorships, um, and they offer historically have offered event programming. And um, as we're heading into this, this year, uh, knowing where we are with COVID, I'm concerned that, you know, the, the mainstay of this organization has been events. And the money that we grant to them um, is to help fund these great events that promote our downtown. I'm, I don't know that we're going to really be able to be having many of these events uh, in the next several months. Um, and so I'm just, I guess I'll just finally put a point on it. I, I, I would like to advocate that we, um, that we continue with our original plan, even though we're in a, in a you know, economically perilous situation, that we step down that, that grant to Main Street. 70,000 is a lot of money. Um, and you know, especially when we're looking at any people in our community that are going to be evicted or foreclosed on, you know, to still have 70,000 out to, win up to a largely event driven downtown promotion agency that works with the DBA that isn't even self funding now. In a way, one could say that, well, now we're just going to give money to Main Street and then the DBA is going to still be able to do its action, but it's not taxing itself anymore, which it used to do. Um, are you saying maybe we just don't pay them until things start going again? I, I spoke with Nick Schroff. I really like Nick. I have a lot of respect for him and for the board. Um, I'm, I'm excited to hear that the Main Street is, has just hired a new director and Candace Callahan. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, she's the go-getter that I think that that organization will benefit from. Um, 
So it pains me to try to advocate to cut them a little bit when. Well, let me ask you this. Are we going to allow them to hold events at the Flagler Center? Because, uh, yeah, are we going to allow them or, or try and hold them back from that? I mean, you have a you have a lease with them. Yeah. That you'd have to terminate if you were going down that path. This is a different budget item, but it's both. Oh, well, I think lease. the commissioners. Well, on the lease side, it's their decision to not okay. lease it for the protection for, for COVID. Commissioners, can I speak? Yeah. I'm uh, pretty intimate about that. Mr. Campani, please approach the mic. Oh, okay. So, Flagler Center has been challenged on events, obviously because of COVID, mm -hmm. but we, we, we've opened our doors. The governor has not said you can't have events. Uh, we also <laughs> have rentals. We rent to uh, Culpepper. Uh, we do have a church. I'm working with Florida Arts and Dance because I think it's important to try to get uh, organizations, nonprofits, children's things to go in there. Um, so it's not like we're not renting. Now, we haven't had many events at all since COVID, but um, it's not because we stopped doing that. It's and you had a lot of self cancellations. With we had, we had all we didn't we we did not cancel at all. We had all self cancellations. Well, probably and I and I'm probably going to say we're going to have hikes and teens cancel and roll over to next year. So it's it's going to continue to be that way. So when I had my meeting with Candace and with Nick, that was the, the topic of our discussion: is the rollback of the seventy thousand versus keeping it. And my position was that as Main Street came to us and asked us for to extend their lease start time out, which came to you guys as a resolution and approved because of all the self cancellations. I didn't see how they were able to have these events or to lease out the facilities to generate the income that would offset and re the reduction of the 70,000. So as you know, we had our own employee, Thondra, who was here at the, the city that we funded, who managed Main Street. And we got out from under that and took those funds and gave it to them so they could hire their own person to kind of create the separation of church and state. And so now that they have their own executive director, now they're having these issues with getting the funding in to order to be able to fund themselves for those for that executive director. I just find it uh, difficult for me to say, hey, I'm going to take 25 grand away from you or whatever it is when they're not even able to get the startup ability to do that self funding to make it self sufficient but being ultimately off of our payroll or off of our funding completely at the end of the three years. Not to mention they are doing a renovation in there that's going to cost, I don't know how many thousands of dollars. It's going to be way over $100,000 that we have donated. We've had donated to us and if it goes through that will make the city yes. whatever it takes it back. All right. So whatever you guys decide is, is fine, but at the end of the day, I think Main Street has tried to, to do it but it depends what you consider your $70,000 going for. Is it for payroll or is it for events? So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I appreciate the, the improvements that Main Street has made. That's something that, I've, that I talked to Nick about. And it, the significant improvements that Main Street has made to um, or coordinated for Flagler, that's, that's, that's an increase in value for that facility. That's an increase in value for the taxpayer. However, and, it, and it's not like it just, you know, appeared out of thin air. They worked hard and went out and got sponsors. They got all that stuff donated. I believe the flooring still has to be done. That probably might come at some expense. They might get it donated as well. So I, I credit that. I count that. But it's not like, you know, the, you know, they didn't, Main Street didn't spend that money per se to do those improvements. Now, any, anyway, all those things aside, I guess what I'm really trying to say is I, Main Street, you know, uh, Main Street was vital and critical and essential to turn our once ghost town downtown area into the thriving place it is now. And they did that largely through these through these events. But to your point where you're going, Mr. Mayor, I see that that importance on the horizon that one this 70,000 is what we're relying on, even though right now we're not looking at special events, but we need economic vitality. We need that shot of steroids in our economy, as even Mr. Freeman touched on 
which I agree with 100%. Our transition now as a commission, as a city, should be less on housing right now and into the future more economic vitality. And I know from you know advice I've been given by many people that, that any sort of business is going to take a few years before they can get up and on their feet running. And right now, we've got a board that its sole purpose this is really to, to spur economic vitality, and they've done it in the past. And now we're heading into a pandemic with an extended lease where they've I mean, I see those the, the donations and improvements on Flagler Center as similar to us going out and getting a grant. We sit here and take credit for the million dollars. I mean, that's wonderful that we got for our alternative water supply. But just because it doesn't come from local taxpayers doesn't mean we should be thrilled about it because Main Street didn't pay for flooring and stuff. They still put in the work to Sorry. get it and enhance that building, which correlates with their path that they're going. I, I, I respect that, Commissioner, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, and I don't mean this to say that I don't believe we need to have economic an economic focus. I'm questioning whether or not the current Main Street model, which is the holiday, the tree lighting, um, and the river walk. I guess those are really the main things that, they, that they've that they been doing. And they're Hob great. Hobgoblins. Hobgoblins, I'm sorry. They've, they've been great. They've been great. But I guess I'm trying to say now, I think that we need to put, let's just say at least we need to put the pressure on Main Street to let them know that, you know, that they've got to deliver, they've got to deliver on helping save our downtown businesses because I think we need some new ideas. Maybe just trying to have events downtown, which is going to be difficult with COVID, that certainly isn't going to work. So, you know, we need to let them know that we, um, that maybe there are some new new things that they can try and maybe they will be presenting them. I understand that they're working on like a downtown bucks program, which is great. I want to see some more of that. And they can tap into the National Main Street program. And this is a, the thing that organizations are facing all around, all around the, the country. Um, I guess my, my main point is I feel like we need to put the pressure on to say, you know, the, the, the like the We're Ready campaign. I would have loved to see Main Street come to us with something like that instead of, you know, help. They helped us with it. Yeah. I guess I'm just trying to say I respect the work that they've done. We really are trying to get them to be self-sufficient, and I know this is the worst time, but also I want to make sure that they're delivering for the downtown businesses, that actually what they're, the work they're doing is really economic, is contributing to the downtown economy, and keeping and helping keep those businesses afloat. And I question that events is the right tap this, this fiscal year. So, uh, Mr. McDonald, if you... Just uh, Mr. McDonald, for the record, uh, just another thought on the Main Street is that uh, uh, they've done a lot more than just events over the years. Uh, they were integral in the planning of Colorado Avenue and uh, helping us get that through. In addition to that, if I, and Mike can probably correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think they were the ones who brought Dewani in Main Street. Was that? Oh, yeah. They were involved. Yes. Yeah, going back all the way back into the Main Street program is really what helped turn around the downtown. And I think that uh, they've gotten away from some of the, the planning the last few years, mm -hmm. but I think that they're getting reorganized from what I can tell. They've got a new executive director. Uh, they've got, they're working on a revenue source, which is the uh, Flagler Center. Uh, and as those come together, this is not the time, I don't believe, to take the, your foot off the gas because, in fact, if anything, we got to put it down harder because, the, because the, the, the way the downtown goes is the way the city goes as far as economic. So just my, uh, just my thoughts, but uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Yeah, and uh, I, can't, I can't belabor the point enough. Yes, Vice Mayor. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I understand everything you're saying, but I want to hear clearly from you. Are you saying that we should um, withdraw funds from Main Street the way that we tried to do, I think, with the BDB some time ago, although I think we kept um, their funding? 
to see if we can get a reliable product from them. I, if that's what you're saying, I don't know if that's what you're saying, but I think that's what I'm hearing from you. Yes, um, yes. Because there are other things like housing or something that the money could be used for. But I'd like to say this. Um, I don't know if this analogy is going to be good or not. And I know that probably people are tired. And I, I just think that Main Street is not or should not be a stepchild of the city. I think it's an integral part of our city. Maybe you're right. Maybe we need to reconsider the way that we are funding and the way that we're doing things. We did have an internal staff when Sandra was here. She did it and we decided that when we're gonna cut away, we'd give them about the same amount of funds to do whatever they need to do. But I can tell you, when you have a family, it's not about a stepchild, you're there. And whether, even if you're a stepchild, you're there. And now is not the time. This is just one incident. Yes, it, it's a big, COVID is big. It's lasted for months. It's affecting a lot of our budgets everywhere up and down the line. But I, I think that we need to give them every chance and every opportunity um, to come to us with something that shows that they're striving and thriving even during these times. But I think it's probably too tall of an order right now to change our budget with them. And because like I think Mr. Mortel or somebody had mentioned we have a contract and we have certain things going on. I know that you're trying to think how can we can do things better and make things more buoyant and vibrant, but uh, we need to, 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 this is a time to help, not to kick in the teeth or kick in the gut or wherever else it is. And I'm not sure if that's what you're saying, but that's what I'm getting. I don't know, but I just think that we need to, I think, uh, was it Mr. McDonald who just came up? Um, I just think that we need to continue with whatever program, hear what the new director is saying, maybe have Mr. Schroth come and talk to us uh, in terms of a budget thing. Mr. Mortel, maybe you can tell us how this whole thing plays into the contract that we have with them now. Um, Vice Mayor, uh, the contract is a separate item um, that okay. in the 70,000. Um, and, uh, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just testing the waters, clearly. Um, <laughs> they, I, I want to say, the I want to say, the contract has a termination clause of 60 days. So I'm not a, advocating for, to kick them out of Flagler. I'm not advocating to completely defund them. Um, I thank you for taking me up on that. Maybe we can just have them in the room and re and discuss our priorities with them and, and let them know we're counting on results for this money. Yes, Commissioner. Mayor, I think they want to show results. They haven't been given the chance like Netherlands has. I mean, sure. everyone's having to stay home and not work. And um, sure. it's just, I think that in time, this is really tough, rough times. And I think in time that they'll prove to us what was before and, and after, but they haven't got to the after. And uh, I hope that they can. So I'm going to support them. Yes. Oh, sure. Let's go for it. Who do we have? Karen. Oh, uh, is that Ms. Hall? He's trying to. <laughs> the last time she came on, she couldn't get in. Oh, she's unmuted. Ms. Hall? Oh, yes. Hello. Yes. This is Karen Hall, Yost Rudge, 1701 Southwest Palm City Road. I just wanted to. Um, I love my city and I'm glad how everybody talks and I just want to say the mayor, I'm glad you're treading the waters. And then I like the idea of Main Street coming back and working something out, but it is COVID and unfortunately all the big plans we had, they, they are being changed, but I like that we all work together and um, I'm thankful for our commission and uh, God bless the city of Stewart. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Um, Yes, uh, you know, it, it seems like I've, I've been a little misunderstood, but that's okay. Um, I appreciate the work that Main Street has done. I, I'm just very interested in 
in, uh, in results. And I look forward to the, the future there. Um, but I would love to put, uh, clean up the, the loose ends of, of the um, Downtown Business Association. So prior to them not continuing for their, their self-imposed tax, um, which went to funding, I guess it was additional um, street sweepers and the uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. On our side, and it, it was a split. And right. That was the funding we kept. And they kept the other half, which was for I don't, events or whatever it is they did. Which there's a there's a separate committee, which is a joint committee between Main Street and DDA. Right. That does the events. The events. Um, the promotion. promotion. The. Um, you have not paid them the 7500 this year. Okay, so the bid went away. We we had put it in the budget accidentally, but the bid had gone away last year because they didn't renew it or the current fiscal year we're in. And so we haven't paid them this year. And so this item shouldn't be in there as well. And so our, we don't, we're not maintaining that same higher level of service that would have represented the previous Dave Peters maintains the highest level of service to every part of the city. I want it to be maintained yeah. for every part of the city. Yeah. Thank you, city manager. And so, it is. Okay, thank you. I, I think Mr. Leggett told me in many years that $7,500 didn't touch the service level he provided down there, but it was, it was a nice, it's a nice contribution. Our budgets reflect our priorities. Um, okay, well, that was my big, uh, my big item. Um, are there any other? Yes, Vice Mayor. Okay, thank you. Since you mentioned level of service and Mr. Peters, and we started this meeting with the great announcement that we're going to have a split in public works, which I believe that department is uh, Mr. Leggett's department with streets and so on. I know that one of the goals of our city is to have more people walking and to have more people on bicycles and bicycles do share the road, but sometimes bicyclists do um, get on the sidewalks. And I walk the sidewalks. I try to take sections of the city and walk different places just so that I could um, see what's going on. And I know that 14th Street right beside the, the lodge, the Stewart Lodge, and going along 14th Street, in terms of liability, Mr. Mortel, and somebody having a bicycle accident or something going on there with a child being pushed on a trolley or something. I just know that I'm asking, are we picking sections and segments of our city? And even if we don't use a street sweeper, are we cleaning those sidewalks as we should so that we don't have those major liability issue? That sidewalk on 14th Street, not only is it always absolutely messy in the um in the uh 700 to 1100 area of that block um but also it's very very cracked in that sidewalk on on 14th street especially there might there are lots of other sidewalks that people have issues with but i just i'm just saying that um since you mentioned about level of service i just want to be sure and i know that these people downtown tax themselves are used to so that they could provide those kind of services to keep the downtown clean. But when we pledge to our residents that we're going to make sure that there are sidewalks are safe, I want to make sure that we have a plan to continue to keep them from debris and so on, or to keep debris on them too long so that people don't have accidents, um, especially with bicyclists and those walking. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters. Uh, in response, Vice Mayor, along 14th Street specifically, if you'll recall, they just did a, the county did a lot of lot clearing along that, that, that right of way. And we were made aware of the, the condition of the sidewalk. And I believe Mr. Leggett has either started or will start cleaning that sidewalk. Uh, but a lot of it has to do with the overgrowth of trees and the fact that mold and mildew will will build up in the cracks. So yes, we do have a plan. We do replace sidewalks all over the city quite frequently. I just saw them replace some in downtown. Um, but we do have a plan and, and there is, there are people in place who, who check sidewalks on a frequent basis and make repairs uh, when they find something wrong. Mr. Peters, can we do a fun program 
so that people, I don't know how we can advertise to people, please clean up in front of your sidewalk and try to keep that extension of your, um, your property, uh, just take care of it because that's a problem. It's right on the other side of the, um, the, the, the lodge, the Stewart Lodge there, but there are other places too. Maybe there's something that we can do within our city to let people start taking a little bit more pride in their sidewalk area, uh, which is an extension across their property if they have sidewalks nice. and see how much of that can help. Vice Mayor, maybe we can, uh, that's a good topic for our next regular city commission meeting. Yes, thanks. <laughs> I can also just point out to you guys quickly, the city actually owns the property directly across the street from Stewart Lodge. Yes. And in the next couple of years, there's going to be a redevelopment oh, wow. site. And when that gets done, it'll be under our control and we won't ever see that problem. Yeah. I didn't know she was talking about Palm Beach Road. I'm sorry. I missed that. She's talking about 14th and Palm Beach yeah. right across from Well, the Well, not on Palm Beach Road, but on 14th Street itself. Like, not the one in front, just on 14th Street. Let's um, let's revisit Thank you. the next regular meeting, Vice Mayor. Thank you for. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Are there any other items pertaining to the budget? Not from staff. No, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Boglioli and Mr. Well, City Manager. Thank you, City Manager. All will now adjourn at 7:11 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, shift and the negative sign. Negative shift and control and negative sign.